control of the high seas requires a mastery of the most advanced possible technology. Deep in the heart of the ship sit two uranium-powered nuclear reactors. Essentially miniature suns, these radioactive furnaces boil water to create high-pressure steam that spins giant turbines. The carrier's eight electric generators could easily power a city of 100,000 people. Using massive reduction gearboxes, the turbines also turn four mammoth propeller shafts that drive the ship at around 35 knots. Its top speed remains highly classified. With regular maintenance, they can run continuously without refueling for 20 years. Every one of the 5,212 personnel is integral in the success of the operation. No tiny detail is left to chance. Blue shirts position and secure the aircraft on the deck, making sure they are presented for launch in the right order. Training has been continuous since the very first carriers were launched more than a century ago. This kind of international cooperation was inconceivable even a hundred years ago. Modern defense systems are evolving at an accelerating pace, questioning the wisdom of expensive new procurement, challenging the status quo. The goal of RIMPAC is, in part, to test and integrate advances in weapons technology. It gives crews a chance to perfect their skills under battle-like conditions. The operation of an aircraft carrier is itself nearly as dangerous as actual combat, and everyone on board is well aware of that. Modern fighter aircraft, like the F-18 Super Hornet, can lock on and intercept enemy aircraft long before visual contact. Yet they still carry machine guns that look like they might belong on a World War I biplane. Even in an age of advanced missiles, pilots must still prepare for the unlikely prospect of an old-fashioned dogfight. Launching a 37,000-pound F-18 Super Hornet off a carrier may look simple, but bad weather, enemy fire, and accidents all contribute to very real danger. After a century of trial and error, one launch system has proved robust and reliable. Below deck are tanks of high-pressure steam from the nuclear-powered boilers. They provide explosive expansion power to pistons sitting in 300-foot-long tubes. Like shells waiting in the barrel of a gun. Once released, the power of the piston can launch an aircraft with the force of four Gs catapulting the plane from zero to 160 miles an hour in just three seconds. Every role on board is critical to the exquisite ballet of launch and recovery.
working as the steam-powered catapult launches with fire pilot. A safe landing is even better. An aircraft's tail hook must snag one of four arresting cables. This braided wire weaves 900 feet through the carrier, down to an arrestor engine. As the momentum of the plane pulls on the cable, a huge piston forces hydraulic fluid in one tank against air in another, compressing the air up to 400 pounds per square inch, stopping the aircraft and pilot in just two seconds. The covering embrace of the arresting cable is regarded as among the most euphoric experiences in all aviation. Japanese on the starboard, Normandy in front, that looks pretty good. All right, and the submarines. Behind the submarines. Always. Always the submarines. The great strength of the submarine is its stealth. Annoying to its friends. Lethal to the enemies. So we need one more submarine line. Also at Rimpack is the new Virginia class submarine. It is 377 feet long and 34 feet wide. Speed can exceed 25 knots and potentially over 30. On board, crew number 120 enlisted men and women, and 14 officers. The nuclear propulsion system produces 40,000 horsepower. A modern nuclear sub could stay underwater almost indefinitely, like an aircraft carrier limited only by its onboard supply of food. It makes its own fresh water for drinking and showers. More than a thousand feet of water provides a stealthy layer of protection for the submarine as it defends the carrier and other surface ships above. Like great weapons of the past, navies simply cannot afford to lose battles fought in earnest. Each rib pack features emerging advanced technology, like the F-35, a fifth generation strike fighter. Since World War II, increasingly powerful radar has been used to detect inbound enemy aircraft. With growing sophistication, modern radar has been used to lock onto enemy planes and shoot them down with guided missiles fired over the horizon beyond visual range. Much of the new fighter's advancements focus on hiding from radar with a technology called stealth. The F-35 has multiple layers of skin coating that absorb radar waves, preventing them from bouncing back to enemy radar screens. Engine intake and exhaust are specially designed to deflect and mask the jet's thermal signature, avoiding detection from heat-seeking missiles. It can carry more than 15,000 pounds of weapons externally, or more than 5,000 pounds internally, dramatically improving the F-35's stealth profile. The U.S. Marine variant, the F-35B, has more than 40,000 pounds of thrust giving pilots more raw power than any other fighter engine in history. Designed for carrier operations, it has larger wings with tips that fold and tougher landing gear for catapult launches and carrier arrestments. The pilot's helmet displays all pertinent information, no matter where the pilot is looking. The aircraft's distributed aperture system uses six electro-optical sensors, giving the pilot an unprecedented 360 degrees of situational awareness. The pilot can actually look through the aircraft itself. All the key information the pilot needs is projected onto the helmet's visor, allowing for instant coordinated response. 
The missile warning system sees some differences across the landscape. The new strike fighter shares data seamlessly with other F-35s, but also with Allied aircraft and commanders on water or land. Computer technology is so sophisticated, it can identify types of planes and nationality, and recommend to the pilot suggested weapons to deploy. With that sensors can even spot a whale, or, more importantly, a submarine on the surface. Early submarines were plagued by lack of situational awareness. Like blind mice in a cave, they knew little of what lay around them. The Virginia class's sophisticated electronic parasol and sensors allow crew members access to vital information. They know exactly where they are, and even more importantly, they know the whereabouts of both friend and foe. Maritime interdiction, gunnery, missile testing, anti-submarine, mine clearance, air defense, amphibious landing. All demand coordinated planning and much trial and error. Advances in weapon systems seek to integrate international navies, armies, and air forces into unified fighting units. Advanced electronic warfare systems can identify in detail friend from foe, jam enemy assets, and provide an electronic shield to cloak threatened friendly forces. one moment can in the blink of an eye become a battle for survival of another kind. For thousands of years, sailors have feared violent seas as much as the enemy. Navies, National Guards, Air Forces, Coast Guards, Marines, all of them are invited to practice their highly skilled crafts during Rim of the Pacific. War or not, landing a fighter aircraft on board a carrier remains the most challenging and admired skill in all aviation. The landing safety officer's voice Always a fellow pilot. Provides a vital measure of precision and confidence at exactly the right moment.
The new F-35B avoids the complexity of a catapult and arrestor cables. It can operate almost anywhere. A strategic advantage in almost any kind of conflict. Like all new weapon systems, it seeks to provide a distinct advantage over possible enemies. Indeed, the goal of modern navies is to provide the most effective weapons, tactics, and training as an overwhelming deterrence, avoiding at all costs the risk of real war. From great naval battles, civilizations rose and fell. Yet there is more firepower on board the ships of Rimpac than all the bombs used in all of the wars in human history. The goal of modern navies is to avoid war at all cost. For if there is another great war, there will be nothing to come home to. There will be no romantic paintings nor writers to celebrate the victory.